Welcome back to the Down to Earth Woodworking Shop. The outfeed table for the new saw stop saw is really going to start coming together today. Right now, I'm just verifying some of the dimensions and comparing them to the drawings. Just for orientation, the torsion box top is sitting here on top of my workbench, and this is the top side of the top assembly. The pedestal legs are actually going to be located an inch and a quarter in from the sides of this bottom section of the top. And remember, we have a 1 and 7 eighths inch overhang. So to get the legs into the proper position here on the top, I just added the inch and a quarter and the inch and 7 eighths and placed the legs at 3 and 1 eighths inches from the sides and now they're in their proper spot. Likewise, the legs on the saw side of the top are going to be set back 5 eighths of an inch from this lower section. So up here on the top, I placed the legs 2 and a half inches back from the edge and they're in the proper location. The legs on the front or the drawer side of the assembly are flush with the edge. With the legs in position, I can now verify the dimensions on the drawing. According to the drawing, the distance between these two legs should be 47 and a quarter inches and, yep, that's exactly what we have. The distance between the two legs on the side should be 26 inches and that's right on also. So with those dimensions in mind, I was able to cut the plywood panels to size. Now I made them an extra half inch long so that I could set them into quarter inch dados. This panel is 47 and 3 quarter inches long and the two side panels are 26 and a half inches long. The height of all three panels is 17 and 3 quarter inches. Now I've tried to use the saw stop for everything on this project, but my saw stop has the 36 inch fence. So to cut the large panel, I used my Festool and guide rail system. But for the other two panels, I cut those on the table saw. Since I had the regular blade back in the saw, I went ahead and cut out a few more parts too. For the face frame, I was able to get a good deal on some birch stock. I milled it square, put it through the planer until I got it just shy of three quarters of an inch thick. I wanted the thickness to exactly match the plywood so I'd only have to cut one size of dado in these pedestal leg assemblies. I used the saw stop to rip the pieces to the widths you see on the drawing. I also milled some six quarter walnut square and to a thickness of an inch and a quarter. And let me show you what we're going to do with that. I want to trim the edge of this overhanging bit of MDF but I'd also like to give it a little additional support underneath, but still have the total thickness here thin enough to fit over that angled iron rail on the back of the saw stop. So ideally, I'd like a piece of trim that could cover this edge and then wrap around underneath to supply a bit more support. And here's how we're gonna do that. After milling the walnut stock to an inch and a quarter thick, I ripped it to five and three eighths inches wide. Then we're going to use the dado stack to plow out the center section to a depth of three quarters of an inch, also leaving a three quarter inch wide piece on the side. Then I'm going to rip that workpiece in half, which will give me two trim pieces out of each piece of walnut. Of course, to do that, I'll have to switch the saw stop back over to the dado stack. Before I do that, let's cut these face frame pieces to length and go ahead and assemble that. Let's get started. 
I used the saw stop and the cross cut sled to cut all the pieces to size for the face frame assembly. Now this face frame assembly just like the solid plywood panel on the saw side of the table measures 47 and 3 quarter inches long. A quarter inch of each style will be buried in a dado on the pedestal leg assemblies. And just like the solid pieces, this measures 17 and 3 quarter inches in height. I've laid it out with four drawers, one real wide large drawer here in the bottom, which is going to be used primarily to hold the crosscut sled. And three drawers up here, each opening measures 12 and 3 quarters across. So I should be able to get drawers in there that will hold saw blades, saw stop accessories, and maybe the dado set. I've mocked it up here with no glue, just a couple of clamps to hold it in place so that I could put the tick marks and I'm going to use the domino system to put this together. I'm going to put two dominoes in each joint. I'm using these little small dominoes which will be fine for this face frame assembly. So all we got to do now is start cutting the mortises and we're ready to glue this up. Well, this comment's not specific to the saw stop, but I will tell you that I've really missed having a cabinet style table saw in my shop. And the reason is, is because it gives you an additional work surface and that always comes in handy. So it's time to cut some mortises. Let's take a close up look at that process. All right, now I'm fully aware that this is a little bit of overkill, but uh, just to keep things from shifting and to help me hold it, I always like to just provide a little bit of clamping on the pieces, particularly when I'm doing these end pieces here, and uh, make sure that it doesn't move. There are three sizes of mortises that you can cut with the domino and in this end grain on each of these pieces I'm cutting the smallest size. The uh, domino will just fit in these two. When I do the side grain on the other pieces I'll use the medium size uh, mortise to give me a little bit of wiggle room when assembling the face frame. Okay, now for cutting the mortises in the edge of the wood, I've just changed my little setup here a little bit to give myself a backer board so that when I press down on this, it won't slide backwards as I'm cutting these. I think I've got everything pretty much laid out and ready to go.
we'll put some clamps on it and we're good to go. As I have mentioned earlier, um, the first time that I changed over from a regular blade to the dado stack, it took me a couple of hours, but I had to cut out the throat plate and I spent a lot of time reading the directions to make sure I was doing everything exactly right. And I had to get my dado stack set. Now I'm going to use the exact same stack that I used before, so that's going to speed things up. But let's just go through the steps and I thought I'd start a timer and we'll see how long it takes. The first step, of course, is to make sure that the saw is unplugged. Then we need to remove this. and we'll crank the blade up as high as it will go just to make things easier and we need to remove our riving knife and then we'll take off the blade If you drop the nut down inside the saw, it's not a lot of fun to go get, so just to be aware. All right, and that's the saw stop blade. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to remove the cartridge. And there's a little locking pin. And the cartridge just slides out. And we have the dado cartridge. All right. And we need to make sure that's seated. Okay. Now we'll put in the stack. There's two shims between these two chippers and they're magnetic shims so these are staying together all right i just want to look at these now and make sure that none of the carbide tips which are ever so slightly wider than the body of the blade that none of those are touching anywhere. All right, that looks good. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to check. It shouldn't have changed, but we want to check the distance from the blade break cartridge to make sure that we are within tolerance. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Nothing is hitting, so that's good. All right, it's nice to clean up these uh, areas where the throat plate goes. And then we can install this. And we're done. And we'll plug it back in and as long as we get a green light we're pretty good and that took me just a smidge over seven minutes with the dado stack in before i start cutting the dados in the pedestal legs for the other pieces i want to go ahead and plow out the center of this walnut board to make our trim i'm just going to use the same stack and just move the fence over now, if you recall from the drawing, we need to start at three quarters of an inch from the edge and go all the way across to three quarters of an inch from this edge. And we want to plow it three quarters of an inch deep. I'm only going to take about half that much in the first bite, and then I'll come back, raise it up to the finished level and plow out the rest. So we're ready to make our first cut.
Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I just got a lot of sawdust to make. Okay, and when it's all done, that's what it's going to look like, only it's going to be deeper. Okay, now it's time for the critical dimensions. I've adjusted the height to what I hope is three quarters of an inch, but I have a good little rule here to check it with. And I've got a piece of ash. I obviously couldn't use my plywood for this. It's only three quarters of an inch thick. So I'm just gonna push it in until I get a full depth of cut, and then we'll measure the depth of cut and make sure we're good to go. You know, that's absolutely right on three quarters, but I would actually like to have it just a, a hair deeper than that. So if anything, the uh, trim is flush with the top or slightly above flush, and then I can plane it flush. So I'm gonna raise this just a tiny bit. That's uh, just a smidge, just a hair, a 64th maybe over three quarters, so that is gonna be fine. Now this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one cut, we're gonna turn the board around and make the other side to define both of the edges, and then we'll just go through and hog out the middle. If you can see this or not but uh, if you've used a dado stack before you know oftentimes you get these little fine line tracks they're little raised tracks in between the chippers I think where you have spacers is where those come from the perfect way to get rid of that is with a small block plane this one happens to be a skew plane and the blade is flush to this edge over here so it's really handy for removing that and you're not really taking off any material you're just taking off those little ridges as you can see they're just uh, hair fine ridges so I'm gonna get this cleaned up the uh, face frame is gluing up and I think with all this plowing there's no question I need to empty my dust collector so I'm gonna do that clean up a little bit call it a day and tomorrow We'll get started on the rest of this, cutting the dados for the pedestal leg assemblies. Be sure to click on part 4B coming very soon. We'll cut the dados in the pedestal leg assemblies and we'll glue up the base. Look forward to seeing you and thank you so much for watching this video.